Hello class. Welcome to Supply and Demand lesson number one. I've generated several of these lessons in an attempt to identify all of the major stumbling blocks with supply and demand. But even if you go through these lessons and you think you understand them all, but you don't read the book or work the homework assignments, that uh, the homework problems that have been assigned, you probably haven't mastered this material. But this will give you a head start, I think, and make uh, reading the book a lot easier. So the first lesson is about uh, why is it why is it that mastering supply and demand is so hard? And in my opinion, it has to do with a kind of sloppy use of the word demand and the word supply. Students confuse the idea of a demand curve with a very different idea of quantity demanded and the idea of a supply curve and a very different idea of quantity supplied. It's really not your fault. The media does it too. Even sometimes in the Wall Street Journal, I can see misuse of these words. They're very different concepts, and uh, they generate quite a lot of confusion, especially in the early chapters on supply and demand in any textbook. So, let's begin. Let me see if I can get uh, my image off of here. There. All right. So, consider the following two simple true-false statements. The first, demand goes up, therefore, price goes up, and the second, the price goes up, therefore the demand goes down. Now if you ask any reasonably educated person about these two statements, they would probably indicate that they are both true. But consider this, the demand goes up, therefore the price goes up. In this case, demand and price are moving in the same direction. And in the second case, price goes up and therefore the demand goes down, they move in opposite directions. Even though independently they seem both true, but when you put them together it seems impossible. How could they both be true? In one case they move together and in the other case they move in opposite directions. The reason is because of this word demand. It has two very different meanings. So, in the first case it should say demand curve. A demand curve is a tendency or a desire of people to buy something. A technical definition is it's a schedule of all the possible prices and the corresponding quantities demanded. In the second case, they're not really talking about a tendency or a desire for people to buy something. They're talking about how many they bought. The price went up, therefore people bought less. They might still desire it just as much as they did before, but at the higher price, they bought less. But, and here's the kicker, the demand curve stayed the same. All right, so here are your definitions. You might want to write them down or memorize them. Demand curve is a schedule of prices and all the corresponding quantities demanded. So the demand curve is like a function. We normally draw it as a graph, but you could write it as an equation or even as a table of numbers. And the same is true of supply curves. All right, so this is what the demand curve normally looks like in a principles class. It's just a function that plots out the set of ordered pairs between prices and quantities demanded. So here's how you would think about this graphically. Imagine there are two prices, P1 and P2. So at price P1, the quantity demanded would be marked as Q1, and when the price goes down to P2, the quantity demanded would increase out to Q2. So we can see here that when the price goes down, people bought more. That's the quantity demanded. But notice that the demand curve, which is that line, that schedule of all the possible prices and the corresponding quantities demanded, stayed exactly the same. This is also true for the supply curve. I haven't gone to quite as much trouble with the supply curve as I did with the demand curve. But this very same problem, supply curve and quantity supplied are two very different concepts. Now, if that's not enough, there is an unfortunate economics tradition. And that tradition in your book, almost every, in fact, every book I've ever seen follows this tradition, they will use the word demand by itself in the chapters, the early chapters, usually chapters three and four on supply and demand. They will use that word demand by itself, but when they do, 
they mean demand curve. And they will use supply by itself. And when they do, they will mean supply curve. But I'm going to never use that word demand or supply by itself. And I'm going to try to hold you to that. Never ever use the word demand or supply by itself. If you mean the function, use the term demand curve or demand equation. Uh, supply curve or supply equation. If you mean the amount that people were actually going to buy, then use the term quantity demanded or the amount that people brought to market, producers brought to market, use the term quantity supplied. It's terribly unfortunate that in the uh, club of economists this word demand is used exclusively to mean demand curve. But in the press there's no such rule. So the press when they use the word demand they might mean anything. So I'm holding you to this rule and I want you to hold me to it. Never ever ever use the word demand or supply by itself. It will only confuse you. Okay, so that's the end of lesson number one. In, uh, in the next lesson, we'll consider what can cause a supply curve and the demand curve to move. And we call these things determinants of supply and demand curves. All right, hope you found this helpful. Good luck.